Hey everyone, this is Andrew at Plainview Farm, and in today's video I'm going to show you how I build a floating brace. Now, these corner posts that I'm setting, like I said, they're going to be floating brace posts, and that's what I'm going to pull my wire off of, uh, which will be woven wire fence, the six inch uh, square stuff. I had some of it left over from whenever I fenced the yard, um, and I'm going to use this to basically fence the dogs out of the, uh, the garden area. So I'm going to get these posts set, and uh, I'm going to show you again how I build a floating brace. One of the other things uh, that I want to mention here is that I did get the stump all burnt out, that, uh, that walnut stump that was in the yard, um, burnt it out, and then I scooped up all the ash and the char and that kind of stuff and threw it out across the garden because I didn't want a high concentration of that um, right there in that spot in the yard. Eventually I'll come back through with the tractor and, and you know grade that all out, smooth that all out. But today we're focusing on these corner posts. All right, so I have discovered a very large flat rock at the bottom of the hole. See if I can uncover this dude. And I'll try to show you. Right, now, down here in this hole, it might be kind of hard to make out, but I'll do my best to get the camera to focus. So, right down here, there's a rock. It starts right here kind of comes around here, at least it's what it appears to be, and goes all the way up underneath that side, comes around the edge, and back up under there. So this is a very large stone laying right there. Welcome to Southern Missouri. Nope, looks like it goes all the way across the hole. Big, flat rock down there. Yep, it goes all the way across the hole. So that's just gonna be as deep as it goes. We're at about 16, 18 inches, I'm gonna guess. I don't have a tape measure handy. So sometimes, like I said, in southern Missouri, you'll run into that. And uh, I don't have any dynamite, and I wouldn't know what to do with it if I did, so this hole's just going to have to be deep enough, I guess. All right, it looks like we are about 16, 18 inches. Yeah, I was... I guess I guessed close enough. How about that? I'll go ahead and explain a little bit of the method to the madness here. So I dug this hole out right next to the fence. Okay, actually you can see this is the bottom wire of the fence right here. Okay, and it is right at the edge of the hole. Uh, the hole actually goes back uh, on that side of it just a little ways. Um, not sure if you can tell by the camera angle or not, but I dug right where this, this T-post was, took that T-post out, and we'll set our post in here. We'll attach uh, this fence to the post after we get our wire attached for the fence across the garden. So I've been asked before, uh, why don't you use steel corner posts? Well, honestly, because I can get these um, fairly cheap. Yeah, they don't last forever, um, but they do last a long time. And I also, I just like the look of a wood post. Um, I don't know, it's kind of like, you know, putting shingles on the house. I prefer the look of shingles uh, to, to metal roofing, um, you know. 
to each their own, right? Uh, I just like wooden posts. Just think they look, they look nicer. That's just my opinion. All right, I'm gonna drop a few rocks in here. Get our post. Check for levelish. That's not it. Spin this. This post has a little bit of a curve in it. So we want the curve to actually go that way toward that fence since we're going to be pulling against it. That way as we put the pressure, the pressure will be on the back side of the post pulling it that direction. So our curve, our bow in the post is actually like this. It bows in the direction that we're pulling. I do want to scoot it over just a little bit. Make sure we're plumb the other direction. Find us a rock. Only whenever I'm setting posts like this, I'll use rocks. Kind of help me get it set how I want it. I don't drop all my stuff and break it. That's plumish. So I mentioned before, when I was showing you the rock in the bottom of this post, or in the bottom of this hole. That um, I didn't have any dynamite. Um, my stepdad, has mentioned before that his dad used to dig uh, his post holes with dynamite. Um, that's what he would do. He knew exactly how to how to you know pack it in the ground to where it would blow straight up and down, and he'd have a nice hole for a post uh, after he set it off. So it's kind of crazy what folks. Uh, Folks used to do, folks used to know how to do. Um, society we live in today, obviously, <laughs> nobody could be trusted um, to go to the local hardware store and buy dynamite. Use my bar here and tamp some of these rocks down in here. We'll check for plumb again. Definitely out of plumb, I can tell you that.
so we're pretty good. I meant to do that. I meant to do that. Oh yeah, pretty good here, pretty good. dirt help fill in some of the spaces around the rocks and then throw in some more rocks So one of the things I do is I put the bigger rocks here up front, I'll show you. So one of the things I do is put the larger rocks here at the front of the post, and that gives a little bit more, you know, the post to press against whenever it's uh, tightened and we, we pull the fence uh, wire off of it. That way it is pressing against um, these stones, the pressure is against these stones instead of just the dirt. Check it for plumb again. Pretty good there. Pretty good there. Pretty good there. Again, we want to make sure this post is leaning back uh, away from the direction we're going to be pulling. Get some more dirt. What I'm doing here is I'm going around chopping up any large dirt clods where they can fall down in there, settle in between all the rocks. And tamp it down. Help settle everything. Pack it in with my foot. I'm gonna hit the post a little bit. I don't know if it actually does anything, but it's just something that I do. In my mind, it helps settle everything a little more. Then go around the post again. Pack it a little tighter. And I'll tell you as well, the ground is moist right now, but it's not wet and it's not dry. So, if the ground was wet, um, we'd be wasting our time. If the ground was dry, we'd be wasting our time because as the soil dries out, what would happen is the post would loosen up and uh, the same way if it was too dry, once the soil uh, took on water again, um, things would get 
loose, the soil would loosen up and the post would loosen up as well. So with the soil being moist right now, I'm able to pack it uh, to where hopefully we won't have any issues uh, with the post loosening up when the soil dries out uh, or nearly as bad. Any, any problems won't be nearly as pronounced as soil conditions change anyway. All right, now that may still settle a little bit um, as I work the fence, so I'll leave my dirt pile off over here and I'll probably come back in and pack a little bit more in there you know, as I build the fence, put tension on this post and we get our uh, floating brace out here, get all that stuff together. Uh, I'll come back and I'll revisit this again, but let's go, let's go set the other post. I've already got the hole dug. Um, it's just ready to be set like this one was. So I've already got this post dropped in the hole. It's just like the other one has a curve to it. Uh, so we want to get it, you know, with the the curve or the bow in the post pointed the direction that we were going to be be pulling uh, the fence. This hole, though, um, you know, what a difference, you know, 100, 150 feet can make. Um, this hole is right about uh, three foot deep, uh, almost. It's, it's just shy of, of three feet deep. The, the ground right here was very easy to dig in, didn't have any problems. Found very few rocks, actually here in my dirt pile, there's, there's not many rocks at all. So again, you know, Southern Missouri is just, just the way things are. Gotta go find some rocks to put in the hole here. So the wire is actually going to be pulled off of the outside uh, side of the post here. So I'm more worried about it being plumb from the inside. Inside is slightly out of plumb. The outside is good. And again, we've got our post leaning toward the fence just a little bit. Pigs are all going to lay over here and watch me work, it looks like. All right, I gotta go hunt more stones. And yeah, once more for the new folks. That's why we call it Plain View Farm.
I think that's good enough to bury. All right, now this one I feel a lot better about. Um, unfortunately, it's gonna be our shorter pull, but uh, you know, the fence is gonna be further this direction than it will be the other direction. So, but uh, you know, like I said before, the stone in the bottom of that hole, that definitely wasn't planned. Sometimes you just have to deal with things the way they are and no, no, I was not going to try to break that that rock out of there. That was a a nice big a nice big chunk of uh, I don't know. It looked like slate, honestly, is what it looked like down there. But uh, I'm no rock expert. But if sometimes whenever you try to break those rocks out of there, you uh, you end up getting out little flakes and pieces and that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes they'll break and they'll, they'll come free, but you know, that rock completely covered the bottom of the hole. Um, you know, the post is sitting on it. So as far as that goes, you know, I'm not worried, you know, that, that post is sitting on top of that big rock. Um, sounded pretty solid whenever I tamped on it, but, uh, uh, so I'm not worried about, you know, frost heaving or anything like that, you know, because the post post is sitting on top of that big rock. But I guess what concerns me the most is pulling against it. Um, but like I said, I, I'm not I'm not going to be putting a whole lot of strain on this this fence. It doesn't doesn't need a whole lot, you know, to keep the dogs out of the garden. So either way, I just warmed up just a touch this afternoon, so I went in and changed hats. So. Now that I have my posts set, I need to pull a wire uh, off of, or some sort of straight line, off of this post over to the next one in order to, you know, make sure I get everything lined up properly for whenever I set my, my floating brace out here, I want it to be straight, I want it to be in line. Now, I've got a really nice mason string somewhere, but I can't find it, so, we're going to use a roll of poly wire. Figure that'll work just as well. Yeah, that might work hard. Right. So this fence is roughly 48 inches high. We're going to be using the same stuff here uh, on this garden fence as we used on the yard fence. And it, like I said, it's roughly 48 inches high. So you want your brace post to hit your corner at two thirds the height of your fence. So 48 inches would be looking at roughly 32 inches, right? Well, I mean, that would be exactly two thirds, but in that neighborhood, okay? So we're going to mark from the ground 32 inches on our corner post. Now this is a 7 inch post uh, at the base where it hits the ground. There's 7 inches from edge to edge. So we're going to find basically the center of where our brace post needs to hit out here on the ground. Uh, I've got an 8 foot uh, four by four treated four by four that we're going to use. So we're going to come out roughly eight foot, um, use our level to find a plumb mark, 
and basically find the center of where that brace post is going to hit and then I've got a little concrete uh, block that we're going to use to, to let that 4x4 rest on. So right here is eight feet. Okay, so right here is about where the center of our block should be. So we're going to let the block set right there. We're going to lay our block just inside of where this wire is going to fall. That way we don't end up um, with our fence wire, you know, getting caught on that block whenever we're trying to get it all set where it needs to go. So, all right, we've got that one in place. Now we're gonna get our four by four brace post and we're gonna figure out where it needs to lay. So I'm gonna use my level to make my mark uh, where I need to cut this 4x4 four four to get it all good and square. With the post, I'm going to come over here and do the same thing uh, with the block. Really all we're wanting at this point is to make sure that uh, everything is laying flat. Again, that the post is laying flat on the block there and that it's striking the post square uh, up there. Gonna go make a couple cuts and I'll be right back. So I'm getting ready to do something that not everybody agrees with whenever you're building brace posts, whether that's H braces or uh, floating braces, whatever it may be. And that is I'm going to notch this this post. I'm going to notch the face of this this round post. And not a very big notch, um, you know, just maybe an inch or so deep. And I'm going to use uh, my favorite cordless saw to do that. Like I said, not everybody, uh, you know, agrees with notching your, your corner post, but I feel like in order for this type of a brace post, maybe not so much on an H brace, but on this type of a brace, um, in order for it to do its job, it, it really needs to have a notch here uh, in order to catch, to catch your floating brace out here uh, to put pressure back, you know, and keep everything where it's supposed to be. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on that for whatever they're worth. <laughs> so 
So I'm gonna use one of these large, I'm gonna use one of these really long screws and we're gonna go in at an angle uh, here in from the, the top of the brace post down into our corner post and I'm gonna pull this brace post up tight uh, against that notch. Now, I'm gonna reposition my block. Check for plumb again. I'm gonna drive a fence steeple in right here just to guide the wire as it goes through. And I'm gonna do the same on my corner post here. Try not to get shocked. And we're gonna feed through. I'm gonna tie this one off. Doesn't have to be any kind of fancy knot. I'm just gonna wrap it A few times, I don't know, five or six. And call that good. Now, whenever I buy inline strainers, I like to get the ones that have the hole in the back. And let me show you why. These inline strainers like this, you can run your wire right through it in the back and then line it up with the hole there. Push it straight through. If I can get my fingers to work, push it straight through. Then your wire remains in one piece and you just tension down on it whenever you're ready. Oh, and this is 12 and a half gauge high tensile that I'm using here. Now, I'm going to feed through, oh, say that again. Now I'm gonna feed through this end of the post. And if you're concerned about it, you can put something here to keep the wire from eating into the end of your uh, brace post. I'm not too worried about it. I haven't really had that much trouble. Um, again, I don't put a whole lot of tension on these because I'm not gonna be putting a whole lot of tension on my fence. So, as I said, pull this one through and we'll come back here and tie it off. No fancy knots. Once again, we're just wrapping our wire. All right, now, Clip off, being this close to ground, just clip off the excess instead of trying to break it. All right, so a 5 8 wrench works on uh, this particular strainer. Um, you can get, you know, the strainer handles and all that kind of stuff. I normally just use a wrench, but either way, a uh, strainer handle probably would be better. But like I said, I just use a wrench. I'm not going to get this thing crazy tight uh, uh, right now. I'm going to just put a little bit of tension on it, and then I will tighten it up again once I uh, stretch my woven wire out here for the for the fence. I think that ought to do for now. Now I didn't run this screw all the way in uh, just like I didn't you know tighten that all the way up uh, because I will pull my fence and then I'll finish all this out um, you know getting this all good and tight because that'll help you know, keep the fence the way that we want it to be. But this right here, um, I'll just show you. You know, it is, I mean, I can pick up on it, but it's, you know, it's pretty stout. Um, once, I get, once I get the fence on there and we have tension pulling against the post and I tighten this down the rest of the way, um, I won't be able to pick up on that at all um, because you know, we'll have all that tension 
against that brick right there, that block. And actually, if the fence over time, if it begins to sag, one of the good things about this type of uh, brace post is I can come back and I can put more tension on it and it'll straighten that fence right back up into place. So these are, these are really great. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of folks out there that they you know, swear by an H brace, but I'll be honest with you, um, I've built I've built several of these on uh, on our old place. Uh, I had these all over, and they never never gave me any trouble at all. Uh, like I said, they're easy. They're a whole lot cheaper. You only have to dig one hole. Um, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's a uh, it's a pretty good way to go. Which I'll tell you this too, I haven't done a lot of uh, woven wire with these either so you know I'll put that little caveat in there as well uh, most of it has been high tensile electric now I do have a lot of H braces here on the property as I say talk about using these um, I do have a lot of H braces here on the property and that's again you know it uh, goes back to that you know old-fashioned looking fence I just I like the way that that an H brace looks um, you know, call me foolish. Uh, I just like the way they look. Either way. So with all that being said, I think I'm going to end this video right here uh, before I finish up the other side. As always, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.